So as we remain standing, today is the Sunday closest to Ascension Thursday, when we celebrate that Jesus has ascended back to his heavenly home, and we're going to join together in our opening hymn, which helps us reflect that uh, uh, ascension, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. So let's remain standing as we sing together. So as we sing God's praises, we take our seats as we confess our sins to God, our Father. And we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry, and we repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent of mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the Holy Mystery Box uh, I've got with me as always today, and uh, I'm very thankful to Vida, because I'd chosen something else in the Holy Mystery Box, thinking that I was creative and fresh, and she went, no, you used that last year, Craig. So thankfully she can remember uh, back 52 weeks, I couldn't. But today is, a, uh, our Thursday was Ascension Thursday, uh, it's when we remind ourselves that Jesus returns back to heaven again, having celebrated him coming and being born among us at Christmas. And uh, this is the verse. After Jesus said this, his friends watched as he lifted up high into a cloud, up, up, up. The cloud covered Jesus so his friends could not see him anymore. Jesus went up to be with his Father in heaven. That's a great way to go back to heaven again, isn't it? To be on a cloud raised up 
into heaven. And the Bible tells us that's how Jesus will return again. Anyone see any of the aurora, 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 aurora the, the northern lights? Anybody see any of the last couple of days? No? Vita and I went on a little date last night. Ooh. At 11 o'clock, we went up and sat on a bench outside Rathmore Church because we thought it would be quite dark there, whatever. I tell you, does romance get any better? But there was no aurora b- b- borealis. <laughs> and probably not much romance there either because we got to half 11 and went, I'm tired. <laughs> but it's been wonderful to look into the heavens if you've seen the photographs and to see God's hand in that creation in the aurora b- 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 in the northern lights. I can't say that. And I'm not just putting that on. I tried it in Rathmore as well, and I couldn't say aurora b- 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 borealis, whatever. So this is what I've got with me today in the holy mystery box. What sort of other things do we have that we put up into the air? You can see the picture there. I've got a bottle of bubbles, okay? But not just a bottle of bubbles. It's a, thank you, it's a jumbo bottle of bubbles, exactly. Will we have a go and see? That's all right. It's here. Anyone like to try to blow some bubbles for me? You guys want to try and blow some bubbles? Do you think you can do it? Do you want to come out here and see? We're going to have a blowing bubble contest. What do you do? What, what's the strategy for good bubbles? You blow. You blow? Okay. Do you give it a good dip in there first? Okay. Do you want to try? Okay. No, you, oh, you can take it. Okay. Ah, not bad. How many is that? That must be a couple of dozen bubbles. Yeah? Okay. Excellent. Anyone else want to try and blow some bubbles? Okay. Of course you do. You want to try and blow some bubbles? Will I hold it or do you want to hold it? Yeah, take, take the sweet out. That's good. Give it a good blow because I don't want you blowing sweet at me. Go. Ah, that's only a little blow. Give it a good blow. That's it. Sorry, Leela. <laughs> Put the sweet back in again. <laughs> what sweet is it? It's a mint, is it? Oh, a Pez! Oh! Hmm. Do you want to swap some bubbles for some? No. No, you're quite right. You're going to have a go. Hey, not bad. We've got some good bubble blowers. And all the adults are just wishing that you could have a go at blowing some bubbles. Is there anybody that'd like to have a, glo- a, 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 a go at blowing bubbles? Harry, are you okay? Yeah, at 13, you kind of don't blow bubbles anymore. Sure you don't? No. Anyone else want to go? Any of the Tamins want to go at blowing some bubbles? Are you happy enough? Do you want to go? No? Don't you? You can try later on, whatever. So blowing bubbles, maybe we need some air in here. If there was a bit of air and we blew them outside, the bubbles would, would raise up maybe, wouldn't they? Um, possibly, well, it's 50-50, but they might rise up. Uh, into the heavenly places. And that's, I suppose, the visual representation of blowing the bubbles. And as they, they rise up, is that uh, we believe that Jesus, when he had finished his earthly ministry, that he rose back up and he went to be with God in heaven. And that is alive in heaven, even though we can't see heaven now, um, that he is there with God in heaven. And uh, we can know Jesus and talk to him. What's one of the ways that we can talk then to God or talk to Jesus. We can, we can pray. We can talk to him anyway, but pray is one of the ways that we can talk and we know that Jesus is there. So that's the Ascension Thursday bubbles. Say that again. Like a candle. Tell me about the candle. Oh, light a candle. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, thank you. I get what you mean now. You can light a candle, and the candle is kind of a prayer that rises. It's like a way of, of a visual way of a prayer, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, thank you. That's a really lovely thing to say. Yeah, sometimes in some of the churches, there are little candles that you can light, and it's like a prayer, a visual prayer that, that rises up to God in heaven. So we're going to sing a song that reminds us that we can talk to God anytime. We can talk to Jesus anytime. Uh, And it's like talking to Jesus on the telephone, telephone, telephone. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to God. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Pick it up and use it every day. Will we stand and join in this together. You can join in the actions if you want. Prayer is like- 
like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to God. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Pick it up and use it every day. We can shout out loud. We can whisper softly. We can make no noise at all. But he'll always hear our call. Prayer is like a telephone. Us to talk to Jesus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to God. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Pick it up and use it every day. We can shout out loud. We can whisper softly. We can make no noise at all. But he'll always hear our call. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. That was really good singing today. So we're going to prepare ourselves to hear uh, and uh, to proclaim the Word of God. And we say, O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. We're going to remain standing as Nikki comes and leads us in the very first psalm uh, in the book of Psalms. It's on page 594 if you want to follow along, but as always, the words are on the screen, and uh, Nikki is going to read the white parts, the uh, odd verses, and we respond with the even yellow verses. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the assembly of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. Like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the wicked, it is not so with them. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not be able to stand in the judgment nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord, the Lord knows, knows the way, way of the righteous, righteous but the, the way, way of the, the wicked, wicked shall perish. perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and ever shall be, shall be world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to take your seats, Mike is going to come and to read for us. Thank you, Mike. The reading this morning is from Acts 1, verses 1 to 11. In my first book, I wrote about all the things that Jesus did and taught from the time he began his work until the day he was taken up to heaven. Before he was taken up, he gave instructions by the power of the Holy Spirit to the men he had chosen as his apostles. For 40 days after his death, he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him, and he talked with them about the kingdom of God. And when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, the times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with the power, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. <coughs> After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. 
This is the word of the Lord. We're going to join together in another hymn of praise. I don't know if this is a familiar one or not, but it's a, another one that we can add to our uh, singing um, repertoire as we worship on a Sunday morning. Lovely modern hymn that reminds us that we lift always the name of Jesus on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Let's stand and sing together. was new uh, you certainly took to that very easily and well well done and so lord as we lift your name on high we also open our hearts and minds to come and to learn from your word today and as i speak i do so in the name of the one true and living god who was father son and holy spirit amen please be seated uh, this week uh, as much as any week uh, is was an interesting week uh, I spent uh, two days up in Armagh, Rhonda also there as well. Um, we were part of the Church of Ireland General Synod. The Church of Ireland General Synod is a yearly meeting uh, of elected representatives of lay and clergy from all over every part of Ireland. And we come and we, well, we go through some of procedural stuff and we hear reports from different parts of church life. Uh, uh, and it can be interesting, it can be, uh, as you would imagine, a little bit dull at times when you're going through kind of procedural stuff, but it's lovely actually to come together and to be reminded that we are part of a bigger church, that we're not just the Nace Union or Meath and Kildare Diocese, but we're part of a bigger church. To hear the work of God going on in so many different places is utterly inspiring. And it's also lovely to reconnect with friends and colleagues that you don't see from one end of the year to the next. I think by the time you leave, you're just about floating in tea and coffee, but it's really lovely to do that. And it was lovely to catch up over the last couple of days uh, and uh, to spend time with people. The Synod, the Church of Ireland Synod, will be in Nace next year. For the first time ever, there will be about 500 people from all over Ireland coming to spend time here. Uh, it'll be in Lawler's Hotel, and we will probably here in St. David's host the Church of Ireland, uh, the opening service. So I don't know, Rhonda, will we fit 11 bishops up here? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, yeah, we might just about squeeze in the 11 bishops and archbishops in the Church of Ireland. Probably the first time ever in the history of this church that all of the, the folk will be here with us. I will tell a little story. Um, I were, we were up in Derry a few years ago. It's been in Wexford and Kilkenny and Armagh and Belfast, but we were up in Derry and a colleague was uh, getting a taxi into uh, the, 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 uh, the place where Synod was and the taxi driver was bemused because there were about 200 clergy walking around in their collars, of course, and he wanted to know, was it a Father Ted convention that was on in, uh, in Derry? So if you see lots of Father Ted's and Mother Ted's and all uh, next year, this time next year, it's, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be Synod Week. But one of the things that uh, I, I enjoy, as I say, is meeting friends and colleagues, and even though I didn't see uh, a friend, Bill, uh, I always used to love uh, spending time with him, a lovely, gentle English guy, but when you left uh, his company, he would always gently say, bye for now, bye for now. Uh, and he just did it in such a lovely way. In other words, he was saying, until we, in an Irish setting, he'd say, until we meet again, bye for now. And that kind of sets the theme for our passage. Uh, but we're going to get, as you see, to the bottom of uh, the screen there to Vocation Sunday, which is today. But today, as we gather, we've been uh, looking over the weeks since Easter. We've been looking at some of the post-resurrection encounters that Jesus has. He meets hundreds of people in the 40 days between Easter and Ascension. He meets the disciples on numerous occasions, and he uses them, I suppose, as final instructions. And today, as we gather, we are in Galilee, or we're in Jerusalem, rather, again, uh, and he is telling the disciples that as he leaves, that it is now their turn to take on uh, the call and the work that they have been watching. And we saw this a couple of weeks ago in Matthew 28 with the Great Commission. And he tells them that they will receive power from the Holy Spirit. And next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, the gift of the Spirit of God's presence with his people. He tells them as they undertake this work of sharing the gospel message, as they undertake this work of being witnesses, that is, people who carry within them the presence and reflection of Jesus, that they are to do that locally, Jerusalem. They are to do that across their land, Judea and Samaria, and they are to bring this message to the end of the world. But as they do that, they will receive the power of God's presence with them. And over the last 2,000 years, men and women have faithfully sought to do that, to follow Jesus and in their words, their deeds, their actions, to serve him and to make his name known. The name of Jesus lifted high gently, but with courage and with boldness. And at the end of our passage, we are told, as I've already seen, that Jesus then rises back to his rightful place, to the throne of heaven. It is quite a way, isn't it? Some of the stuff in the Christian faith is amazing. Uh, some of the stuff you just go, wow, that's really hard to believe. But Jesus raises back up to heaven again on a cloud. And it tells us at the end of our passage uh, that Jesus will return in the same way from the east. That's why a communion table is always set up at the east end of a church because we are looking towards where Jesus will return again. And we affirm that in our creed. He rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he will come back to judge the quick and the dead, or he'll come back uh, as king of the earth, and God's kingdom will finally be established. But until that happens, we are called to be his witnesses. So that's kind of the background, or that's kind of the, the, the uh, teasing the part out of the passage. But I want to bring us to uh, what today is in the Church of Ireland, and that is uh, Vocation Sunday. So right across this land, across our Church of Ireland, many churches will be celebrating the vocations of lay and ordained folk who respond to that call to be witnesses to serve God wherever God has called them and placed them. And I am so grateful, talking to different colleagues, and Rhonda and I were talking to other people yesterday at lunch, you know, and talking about in many churches that there are only a small few called, or a small few serving. I am so uh, blessed to have so many people that want to serve God as lay folk in our church, but also serving beyond our parish walls 
in places of work, in places of education, in everyday places as well. So Vocation Sunday is an opportunity to celebrate that ministry, the ministry of, uh, of God's people, the priesthood, if you want, of all believers who are serving God with their gifts and their talents and their passions. And we're working on that. We're working on the opportunities for people to come and to serve. So I'm thankful today on this Vocation Sunday for the many ways that people serve in the church. But I want to take a, a little extra strand on this Sunday, and that is to talk for a few moments about the call to ordained ministry. Both lay and ordained ministry equally valid, equally important, but I want to talk for a few moments about the call to ordained ministry, as God calls in our church men and women to be set aside into holy orders and to lead His people in that sense. So how does that happen? What is the process? Well, for me, I was 18 years old when I felt the sense of God's call. I can tell you at 18, I did not aspire to be a cleric. I did not want that in a sense. I didn't seek that out. But for me and many people would say, it's just this little niggle, this little thought that won't go away. And over the course of a number of years, I began to explore that. And uh, I was accepted for training in 1996, ordained in 1999. So in a few weeks' time, I'll be 25 years ordained, which is very scary, June 1999. Uh, and I have served God in four different groups and unions of parishes, kind of up and down the East Coast, Banbridge as a curate, Kid of the Grange as a curate, uh, and then, of course, in Virginia and here over the last 15 months. And every place has been a privilege um, to do that. But in terms of ordained ministry, there are two different strands. There are folk like myself who feel that call to full-time stupendry ministry. So in other words, you pay me to do uh, this uh, and uh, that, that's one strand. But we also have, uh, in the last seven years, sitting alongside that, the strand of ordained local ministry. Folk who feel called to uh, serve in their local church, usually alongside um, a rector. So Carol was an ordained local minister, usually self-financing in that way, other than his expenses, and usually working alongside, as I say, um, a rector. But often, in rural dioceses like many of ours, just helping out in churches and groups that perhaps don't have somebody or doing Sunday duty and all of that. So fully uh, ordained, equally ordained stipendary ministry, but also ordained local ministry. And the process is usually quite straightforward. It involves time and it involves testing and it involves discernment. So the first thing, if someone feels that sense of call, that little niggle that won't go away is usually to talk to their rector or talk to their priest in charge or cleric. Uh, and again, just to discern that calling. Uh, then uh, the next step in the process, again, is to meet folk in our diocese called the Diocesan Director of Ordinance, DDO. We've got two in Meath and Gildare. We've got the Reverend William Seal, who is the rector in Kells, and we've got the Reverend Ruth O'Kelly, who is the priest in charge of Clane, to spend time again, usually as part of a fellowship of vocation, testing that call, uh, uh, among others, usually in the congregation, testing that call. And often, in my experience, and I've had a few people in the parishes that I've been, uh, once you say that someone is thinking about ordained ministry, lots of people will go, yeah, I knew that, I saw that, testing that call. And for me, it was lovely. Yesterday, there was a lovely guy called Raymond Kettle, uh, who is now a rector of St. John's. And then in a few months' time, there's a lovely African lady, Faith, will be ordained as part of OLM. So God calling from amidst and that call being tested. So locally, tested uh, in the diocese over a number of years, prayerfully uh, sharing that. And then usually this sort of uh, phase after that is that you go to a selection conference over three days if it's for full-time stipendary, or you go to a selection committee made up of lay and clergy who again test that call. And I've been part of that process both in my previous diocese, but it's funny the way things work. I was also the neutral person in Meath and Kildare that was invited in uh, to interview prospective OLMers, and I couldn't have imagined when Carol was coming through and others that uh, I would benefit from uh, that decision. And then usually uh, at the end of that, there are three uh, decisions that go back to the bishop. There's a yes, 
we believe this person is called and they should start training, or there is a defer, not yet, maybe need a little bit more church experience or life experience if they're too young, or there is a no. And the no is a hard one because if people have invested time uh, and that comes back as no, then that can be difficult. But I can tell you, having interviewed many folk and been in those situations, there is usually just that deep sense if it's a yes or a no, it's usually that clear. And then after that, training begins. If it's full-time stipendary, it's done two years full-time in Dublin, with the third year as a deacon out in a church. Uh, it can be done over five years part-time, or ordained local ministry is done in little clusters over about two or three years before ordination. So that's kind of the whole process. But as you will see, it takes time, time to discern, time to reflect, time to pray. And there are lots of different layers of affirmation locally, in the congregation, in the diocese, and then beyond that. So Vacation Sunday is a Sunday when we get to be thankful, to give thanks to God for all the vocation within our church families, within our churches, across many different areas and disciplines of life, both within the church walls and without in the community. But it's also a chance to lay it out there and say, have you had something that's been niggling away at you? That sense within your spirit that is saying, I think God is calling me to more, that God is calling me into particular ministry in the church. We're working on that. But in terms of uh, ordained life, that you just sense that Holy Spirit niggling saying, this is where I want you to serve me and go and explore that and go and follow that call. Go and serve God through the ministry of ordained, uh, ordained ministry. So Vocation Sunday, lots involved there. And as we reflect, let's just take a few moments to pray. Lord, 2,000 years ago, you gathered a small band of followers and asked them to be your witnesses in the world. And over the last 2,000 years, we are so thankful to those who've gone before us in this place, and in your kingdom, men and women who have answered that call to be your witnesses in Judea, Samaria, the ends of the world, in Nace, in our community, to the ends of our land and our world. That you call folk to serve you in lay capacities, to use gifts and passions, but you also call men and women to serve you and to lead your people as ordained clergy. And I pray today, wherever we sense that call, that you would make that clear within us, that you would allow us to discern that and that you would help us as a congregation, encourage those who perhaps feel that call within them. So, Lord, we open our hearts, we open our minds to you today as we seek to serve you in whatever way you call us to be your witnesses. And all of this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to join together in our next hymn, again, a hymn that reminds us to worship the majesty of Jesus. Majesty, worship his majesty unto Jesus, be glory, honor, and praise. Let's stand and sing together.
And so as we remain standing, we join together in that creed formed so early in the history of the church as the apostles began to put shape to what they shared and what they believed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we come to pray together as God's people. Let's take our seats. Let us pray. And again, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And the collect for today. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so as we imagine the bubbles that we blew earlier rising into the sky, we imagine our prayers rising bubble-like into the sky and into the very places where Jesus is in heaven. Gracious God, as we gather today on this Vocation Sunday, we are reminded of the diverse ways in which your people serve you within our church locally, across our community and land, in our workplaces, and wherever God's people are around the world. We give thanks for the ministry of all who faithfully proclaim your word and who minister to your people both in lay and ordained capacities. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for our bishop. We pray for Bishop Pat in all that she does in her role leading us. Be with her, Lord, in the joyful moments like confirmation, but also we know that she shoulders many difficult moments of life. And we pray that you will sustain her, surround her with your spirit, that you will guide her and that you will protect her and Earl and her family in the difficult moments, too, that she faces. We pray in our cycle of prayer for the Eden Dairy Union, for the Reverend Sarah, the rector there, and for the Reverend Alan, who serves as OLM there. We pray for those serving the church overseas. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Sweden today and for the Anglican Church of Burundi. We pray especially for those discerning a call to ordained ministry, that they may be open to your leading and guidance. Grant them clarity of vision and the courage to step forward in faith, trusting in your provision and strength. We pray that you will bless our church, your church, with an abundance of vocations, that we may continue to serve you and fulfill your mission and purpose in the world together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we lift up to you the needs of our world and our land today, knowing that you lo your love extends to all people and all nations. We pray for communities experiencing hardship and injustice, asking for your healing and restoration to bring about lasting change. 
inspire our leaders and policymakers to work for peace and reconciliation that all may live in harmony and dignity. And we remember today those who are marginalized or oppressed in our society. We ask for your protection and empowerment on them. May your light shine brightly in the darkest corners of our world and our land, bringing hope and renewal to all who are in need today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A merciful God, we pray for ourselves today. We pray for all who we know are in need of your comfort and healing and provision in their lives. And we do that in a few moments of personal prayer. Lord, we lift up before you today the sick, the lonely, the grieving, the oppressed, any who are struggling. And we ask for your presence upon them, your peace, that you would provide strength in that moment of need. And I pray that you will bless those who minister to the needs of others, all of us, that you would inspire us to be instruments of your love and compassion into the world, into the lives of those around us. So whatever we've prayed quietly, whoever we've prayed for today, we leave and pass those prayers into God's hands as we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask, merciful Father, that you would accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
And so, Heavenly Father, as we've joined and worshipped you here, may our hearts be hearts of service, serving each other, serving you as witnesses into the lives that we go into today and every day. And as we leave this place, may we know always in our lives your presence. As we think of our loved ones and each person in a house across this union of, uh, of parishes across our community, as we pray for those who are in difficult moments of life, we pray your presence, your presence, your peace, and your blessing upon us. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. And so we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.